Today we're going to talk about web writing. Until now we've been more focused on the technical aspects of the writing, getting, getting a sentence on the virtual page, and the content that we need, which those are both extremely important. But today let's look a little bit more, um, put a more focused look on what it means to write for the web or to produce content online that's effective. Um, there are actually awards for this, so the Webby Awards come out every year and they focus on a number of different things. The Onion won a Lifetime Achievement Award, um, and there's certainly awards for the Stratcom end of our business. So it's a good idea to check out uh, what the award winners are doing to see their best practices. So look, let's look at some of these various ways that we write in the media. So this is media writing. Instagram, short and simple, but effective captions in Instagram when you're writing professionally um, are really important. You have fewer words, so each one is more important. And we still do long form, so almost 2,000 words in this long piece um, the Statesman did. And then we have the challenge of producing for mobile because we still write in varying lengths, but we have um, a much different environment to work in. So there have been some um, developments over the last few years that have really um, changed the way we produce content online, in great part because of our technical abilities. So Snowfall was a piece that was produced a few years ago by the New York Times. It had three million visitors in one week. It won a Peabody and a Pulitzer. It's, it's really um, been noted as um, a changing point for online media. So it is elegant um, in the way it's produced. And so I'll just play through a little bit of it um, as we talk. But this story, in many ways, has the traditional look and other ways is different. So throughout it, there will be um, these small snippets of video and um, a lot of graphic elements. Just the format of it, now we see um, in templates, right? So what took the New York Times quite a bit of time to develop on the technical end, um, now we can get in templates because we found this to be a good storytelling tool. Um, one of the things that we're seeing more today is sort of that simplifying the complex, right? Quick reads, um, aggregating content. So Vox does something that's pretty effective is um, they do Vox sentences. So basically they break down these complex issues into specific um, sort of bulleted item sentences. So here's this piece of information and then this piece and then this piece and they all link you back to the original source um, which can be helpful and really I think that's the the most ethical way to do it when you're going to aggregate is point back to the original source and let people go to get that whole story there. The bottom line is working online is like the wild, wild west. There really aren't very many rules. So it's not like you've got a template that you can just run by, right? But we're trying a lot of different things to see what works. And we will continue to do that, right? It's always going to be about trying different things. So this is something the Huffington Post put together. Um, it's called Why Millennials Are Facing the Scariest Financial Future of Any Generation Since the Great Depression. So this is really a different, a, quite a different look. Um, it's produced in, um, you know, very visually as you scroll through it. So you just kind of scroll through. It looks really different. Um, it's got links, of course. It's got some definitions. Keep going. You can actually get um, a simple text version. So if you don't want sort of all those bells and whistles, you can look at it in this simpler form. Or you can go back and look at it um, through this. And so one of the things that I find interesting as we look at this kind of format, so the content is still king, right? So it's still about the content and it's about well-written content, um, well-researched content. But then how you produce it um, really adds value and can attract the audience. So what's interesting is when you get to this point, you're still scrolling down as it were, but it actually starts moving across your screen, which is sort of interesting. And again, very visual, right? So this is quite a long piece. Um, as you can see, and there's, there's um, again, some sort of animations. I mean, there's just a lot of different elements in this story that make it um, a really different way to tell a story. So, and as you can tell, it's like, this is the scroll bar over here. So, like, there's a lot more to this story. Definitely worth checking out as um, an interesting way to put content online. So, we still do these longer form pieces that are traditional as well. And um, this piece, for example, is has 95 photos with it, right? So this is a story that is primarily words and visuals um, about looking at the Texas border. And so primarily it's produced in long, um, 
you know, many, many paragraphs of uh, print, right? So as we keep going and we keep going. Um, but there are some very interesting visuals that go with this. So through this of the 95 photos, then you can go along um, the actual route that they traveled and each one of these elements may be photos or maybe a little video. So again, it's um, utilizing these various ways to still tell stories. There's actually nine more screens of types. This is quite a long piece, not enough subheads for my likes. But we also have to know how to write for um, sort of these mobile teases, right? So a lot of us are getting our news on our mobile. And so being able to write succinctly as a tease, because as you can see, there are so many different um, media outlets vying for our attention. And we have that added um, element of now having our news and um, content delivered on our wrists. So another challenge for writers to be able to convey information in a small space. So in the past, it was not as complicated, right? So radio did audio, TV did video and words, and print did words and still images. But now we all work with the same toolkit. We can, all of us, each of us can do these individual um, elements and put them together on our platform. So really the strategy is about what do you need to serve your audience? What is best, what is going to work best for your audience? Um, there are some best practices out there. So this is from PRSA, which is the Public Relations Society of America. And they've um, put together this quick little list of effective ways. They've done some research and shown here are the, the best um, ways to write effectively online. So I won't read all of these, but there's a few that we'll, we'll be familiar with because we've already talked about them. So the average sentences per paragraph, two to three. The average number of words in an effective lead, that first paragraph, 25 words. Right, so words in non-lead paragraphs, right, so after the lead, from 42 to 63 words, which is shorter, better. The overall length of a press release or news release, which also this is true for, um, you know, basic media writing, 400 words or fewer. We still are in, for the most part, most of what we do and the most effective stuff that we do should be shorter, although we do appreciate that occasionally, especially on investigative pieces, long um, long-form journalism is still um, important and it's still valued. So um, average words or characters in a headline, remember we talked about Google's um, limit on how much it'll take on the headline in the search screen, so eight words, 100 characters. And we use passive voice infrequently, right? So for the most part it's active voice active voice. And we also see that news releases, um, just as with other media online, have multimedia content, right? So we might think of a news release as this piece of paper, um, even if it's a virtual piece of paper online, but we are producing more multimedia with press releases and press kits because that is effective. So let's look at what these looks like. this looks like with respect to our inverted pyramid, which is what we've been doing, right? So we'll do traditional versus web. So the lead is still if we're talking about your, your most common structure, there are other structures, as we've said, but the most common structure is that summary or basic um, news approach would be the lead has some of the five W's. And then maybe we go with a quote or important details in print. We do the same thing online, but we include links to some of those details instead of including all of the details in our story. We have more background or details, more background or details, but with links, again, pointing people to more information. We keep moving down with details and background. We do the same thing on the web, but one of the things we like you know, as a way to sort of give us a little visual and to make it easy to read is sometimes we do bullet lists, right? So this is a bullet list, just a, here are these couple of things instead of writing more paragraphs. And then we use paraphrase and quotes. We still use paraphrase and quotes online, but we might say, here's three perspectives and then take you to um, additional content that we don't include in our story. So sometimes we do these little breakout side pieces. And then we end it with more information or a quote, something like that. We do the same thing online, but again, we have the ability to link, so we're going to link to that more information. So for our purposes, we're going to assume that pretty much everything we're producing is for online, so we're going to use these important elements as we move forward. So there are best practices, even though there aren't any hard, fast rules, or not many hard, fast rules for working online, uh, we still have best practices. So concise, tight writing, right, active voice, just as the PRSA 
um, Prose said. We like compelling headlines, right? So we need to draw our attention. They need to have good SEO. Images, images, images. They really are powerful. We find that um, content online is much more effective, more likely to get more views um, when there are images. So graphics sort of work in the same way, right? They can help explain something visually. Subheads help move through um, the story, especially a longer story. They sort of let you know something interesting that's coming up, and artfully written subheads can really help draw the reader through. And then links, right? So a way to go to additional content so that it doesn't all have to be there. And since this is a beautiful photo from um, NPPA, the professional photographer's New York Times photo, I just want to take these words away so you can see. We love images, right? So if that had just been words on the screen, Eh, but with an image, made you look. So one of the things that we do online as well, it's constant updates. So this is um, a pretty common format. This was the Austin bombing. So you'll see that as we write, we're just constantly writing on top of the stuff that we had done before, right? So we do the most recent updates. So this is 4.15 p.m. Earlier, we had updates at 3.18, at 1.45, at 12.10. Um, because this is things are happening as we go, it's not like there has to be an hourly update. It basically is when something happens. So we would do these sort of live updates online, you know, on the web and on social. Now, um, that was the Statesman, so it's a traditional um, print outlet. TV stations often don't have the number of people to get out there. They don't have, the staffs aren't quite as large. And so TV stations will do their updates on air, obviously, um, even if they're publishing, even if they're broadcasting their live updates online. But they really often only write one story, right? So they'll do live updates online and social but one story. And one of the things that's, that we don't want to do um, is called shovelware. And that's where you basically take your content that you would write for your original format, say your TV station, your TV script, or a newspaper, what was going to be in the print edition. You don't want to just shovel that to online because effective storytelling in broadcast is not the same as effective storytelling for the eye, right, to be read. So you really have to rewrite that to the effective um, platform that's going to be published on. So Texas Monthly is a magazine. They do some things in print and they do other things online because that's much more effective. Um, when you're talking about complex issues, again, it's really important to make them simple. We can read, there's a screen of sort of a traditional um, computer screen is about 100 words per screen. Mobile is different, of course. But, um, and the size of your screen, of course, but about 100 words per screen. So you want to sort of break it up about every 100 words, right? Give the reader a little something to keep them going. So this was Edward Snowden in the NSA files, very complex issue, won a Webby Award for best practices because of how they put this story together. So something that's very complex, trying to explain how the NSA um, could listen to all of these different people based on the rules, they took this concept and made it into a graphic so that you could more easily understand. So they put it in terms that, that you know, we live in. So in terms of Facebook, it says if you have 765 Facebook friends, um, that means 20 million, million people might lead the NSA to your phone. So basically what they're saying is if it's in the context of who you're talking to on Facebook, everybody in the world could suddenly get tied in because we're so connected. BuzzFeed also is effective online, right? And so sometimes they get a bad rap and they certainly have done, you know, they do all kinds of things online, but they have a fairly decent um, news section and they have some really good journalists working for them. So in their news section, they do it differently than other parts of their website. So they have a lead. This is an inverted pyramid lead, just like you might expect um, any place. They're really good at linking to additional content, so lots of links. And then, you know, they'll embed a tweet or they'll do other visuals to keep this story moving, right? And then they often even link to the tweet, so you can go there. So this is the same sort of thing that you might see with the Austin American States and the New York Times, um, the Texas Tribune, but it's just put together in a little bit more visual Subheads really help the reader move through, so subheads really work. So I, this is, here's a whole piece on writing effective subheads, which I think it's, it's kind of interesting that they actually wrote effective subheads for the piece on subheads. So why, why it doesn't matter how great your content is, right? So that makes you want to read what? The reason your readers don't stick around. The recommended cure for scanning and why it doesn't work. 
So essentially, each one of these subheads is leading you to here's the stuff that you're going to find underneath this subhead. So they need to be on point, but it's also good if they're sort of interesting. And so as you're writing your next story, think about the subheads. The readers really appreciate something to help carry them through that great content that you're producing.